This is a quick update to my filter. I've built a small alarm. This is a dollar store window entry alarm thing. Little magnetic reed switch. That I've converted to work as a moisture detector. Yes, you'll hear this beeper, this uh, buzzer later in the video, so guard your ears. Another update to this unit is um, somebody suggested that I use wing nuts, which is a good, good idea. It makes servicing this a lot easier. Actually, I'm not going to change the filter right now, though. Uh, since it's so easy to get in there, and I just back this one off a ways and leave it sit. I was going to hack it off, but it's kind of neat. I can back it off, let it sit there, swing the cover open, change the uh, screen that gets dirty the fastest, which is usually the final screen inside there. So I find if I clean that screen a couple times, well, actually, I clean both screens while I got it open. I let the sack go, that, uh, I'm using those nylon strainers, I let them go two or even three uh, rinses of the screens before I change a new uh, sock type thing in there. This is a dollar store item. It's actually worth the batteries. You know, the cost of the batteries alone are worth a dollar pretty much. So it's a pretty cheapy item. I want to see if I can use this and modify it um, to make a water alarm out of it. So first of all I want to open it up see what's in here. I know I got one of these sitting around somewhere that I haven't used yet. I just bought a fresh one anyway. And what I'm going to want to do is get rid of the uh, magnetic switch and um, put in an mo electronic, you know, moisture detecting switch instead. It's going to be super simple. Let's see if I can get the code here. Just to go this way. This is gonna be for my windshield, uh, for my filter for my wash machine. So when the filter starts to overflow, hopefully that'll uh, get my attention. Took the batteries back out. I only see one screw. Phillips jeweler style screwdriver. And there it is. So an integrated circuit that's been potted right on the board. A little piezo. This I guess is a capacitor. Maybe it's a coil. Not much to it. Um, where's the magnetic switch? Well, I just did some real off-the-wall um, calculations. I'm going to use a Darlington, just because it's what I got around. I got transistors around. I don't have a FET around, which is something I should probably use instead. I know my friend John uh, made a similar project like this um, a few couple years back on his old channel. He used a FET. Anyway, I'm going to use what I got. And I'm kind of guessing at a lot of these voltages. I just wanted to get in the ballpark. And then I'm not even going to use my result anyway. But if I used to if grab some transistors off the shelf, if they have a gain of 50, well, in a Darlington, 2500 would be the gain of the Darlington. If the gain is a 20, which would be really low ball, a real low, low ball number, um, then at least a 400 gain. So I was thinking 10 milliamps to run this buzzer, probably at the most. 
these batteries might be able to do 20 milliamps for a real short period of time, but and again, I'm going so rough with these numbers, and I'm using such a low gain to calculate that I can be off a little there. Then I've subtracted the voltage, the voltage that's going to be lost through the Darlington. Um, probable voltage loss of the circuit. Maybe 2.1 volts left divided by that current, 84. So I'm going to probably use like a 10 kilo ohm though, because I kind of allow for resistance for the water too. So I got to keep it fairly sensitive. I just want the resistor to help. Um, I could probably even go without a resistor here. So a very simple circuit. And I'm going to fit them right in this board and in place of the uh, existing sensor, sensor, and then run two wires up the side. You need about a foot of wire, a little more than a foot of wire. And the sensor itself will be nothing but a couple of wires cl close together. Well, looking at the circuit a little more carefully, I'm trying to figure out what I can of it, since a lot of it's just under a blob. But this is actually a transformer. This top piece here is not my uh, sensor. My sensor for the is no, there's no reed relay in here, like I thought there might be a reed switch. These two little wires in the side here, on the right side of the board. Somehow that's the magnetic sensor. Uh, I have no idea. Whatever it is, it's very brittle. I tried to uh, get my fingernail underneath it and tug it up a little bit and it just snapped right in half. So I hooked a wire up to where the uh, magnetic sensor had been. Whether it's a reed uh, switch or whatever it is. Apparently the switch normally was normally closed and only opened in the field of a magnet. Because when I had a wire attached to it, I had to uh, put a short on the wire to get the, be the beeper from stopping to go. So it's kind of opposite the way I really want it to be. And I couldn't just put my little circuit I put before, my little, uh, I was going to put a... I soldered two transistors together in a Darlington. I was going to put them right across where the sensor had been. Well, that's not going to work. Um, so instead I just put it in series with the power for the whole circuit and left these open. And that works. Lick my fingertip. So there's my water sensor. And there it is, all assembled. Uh, kind of a tight fit with the two transistors, but it got all back together. If I could have a uh, transistor that was a single Darlington or a FET, would have been a better match. I didn't use a resistor at all. There's not enough current here to damage the transistor. All right, so now I've stuck the uh, use the double stick tape that comes with it, stuck it onto the side of the filter. I was gonna put the cover, but that's too much action for the wire to be moving all the time. I've got a pretty stiff boot. If you had an inner tube like I suggested, it'd be a little easier, but jammed a screw driver way under there. I'm going to put it up here. When it's backed up enough where it starts building up water pressure in here, it'll go off. We'll see how this works. Okay, so that's about where I want that. Pull the screwdriver out. Alright. Well, I'll have to see how this works. I didn't clean this thing out to see if it would uh, backflow in a laundry load or two. Well, it didn't have to wait very long. And yeah, water went over the tap, so it definitely needs changing. And the alarm did go off. Now, if only I had the switch working on the side. The board's not in here very well. Oh, there it goes. The board's not in there very well. I got. The transistors, I should have laid them down flat one at a time instead of doubling them up first. If you're making your Darlington, you know, make them so they're like flat across the top of the PC boards, not bunched up like mine were. So this PC doesn't really fit this case correctly. So I'm having trouble keeping the off switch working right. It's not, the board's not on its mounts correctly. 
Anyway, so don't do that mistake if you make one of these. But that's easily avoided. So basically, I just put a Darlington, which is two transistors, no resistors, no nothing else, just two transistors, um, in series with the noise making circuit. I didn't use the uh, contacts, I broke the contacts playing with them. So that's it, it worked. I'm experimenting with what to do with the uh, tips here. At first I just took this straight zip cable and didn't even break the conductors apart. Stripped off about a sixteenth of an inch. And that's almost too sensitive. This here is um, spread maybe an inch now. And that's even going to be super sensitive. My skin isn't even wet anymore. So that's still plenty sensitive. I may end up even spreading it more and experimenting, but this should be good for now.